Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to some more Arena Total War. Today's video, we're going to jump into another super close replay I had last night. It was just such an insane game going right down to the wire and it's much closer than the game I showed beforehand with a lot more action as well, which would be really, really exciting. As always, we're going to be playing my Greek Cavalry. I know you guys are getting a little bit sick of this cav Cavalry gameplay. However, it's what I play, so I normally tend to have the best gameplay on the cavalry so that's why you when you see replays i'm generally going to be playing it however don't you guys worry i'm going to unlock multi ad's as well as play a bunch more barbarian infantry on the channel so hopefully you guys can join me on that journey so hopefully the gameplay will be a lot more varied as we go forward in the next couple episodes of arena if you are enjoying arena make sure to drop a like and a comment down below that would be amazing and now let's jump into this awesome replay i'm going to be playing my tier sevens as you can see i have now unlocked my tier eight which is awesome awesome uh, on the grind and I also had all of this gear I haven't unlocked a single piece I had all of this stuff unlocked from the previous ranks which was really really nice so I could immediately just jump into a pretty high tier tier 8 unit without having to worry I do have to spend 50,000 experience to get this and I don't think I'm even going to use it this is much better for what I want my group cavalry to be more charge impact which is just amazing whereas this is, lowers it for more speed and I think the charge impact is much more vital for winning them charges especially against greek cavalry because if one greek cavalry if i have this and my opponent has this and we're both greek cavalry at tier 8 i'm gonna come out on top because i have more of the charge impact so this is really really cool but anyway let's jump into the tier 7 greek cavalry gameplay on this insanely close match Okay guys, so we are loading in on Hadrian's Wall. I am playing in a group of three people with some of the Sun Tzu boys um, and they're going to be both playing as multi AD Spears, which is really nice. If we just go ahead and slow things down, we can take a look at both sides or we'll allow myself to play a switch. So as you can see on our forces, I'm playing the Greek Cavalry. We have a fair amount of swords in our roster, pretty much all sword heavy and we have no missiles whatsoever, which is something I thought we actually had a couple units of missiles, but I guess I was wrong. So we have some war dogs, we have a lot of missiles, which is really 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 useful on the left flank we've kind of got some tier eights there the tier eight sword infantry this is actually the premium unit the hispania unit which is very cool indeed and they're going to be pushing up on this left flank in our center we have our multi 80s one of the amazing things about multi 80s is he's just so goddamn quick so because of that he can scout out and act pretty aggressively however the catapults are going to be flying in already and that's going to be doing some pretty dirty damage i'm not going to lie and they're going to make a big push there on the other side we do have a lot of infantry also pushing up if we switch over to the other team really quickly we can see that they have a nice position of archers and artillery along with some heavy infantry on either flanks and also a lot of you know cavalry kind of dueling out with our own cavalry over there so again let's go back to our team now and fully watch this so as you can see the enemy actually don't have a very good position if we go like that they don't have a great position at defending their center and this is one of the things with multi ad's you can do you can catch the enemy off guard really really effectively because they're not thinking you're just going to rush middle with like a multi ad's who is so quick so you can catch their missiles and their artillery off guard and that's why it's always super important to scout because if we didn't push center with some fast units to scout this out this artillery could have pounded us away constantly and we would have been like well we assume they're defending it they must be defending it right there's nothing else they can be doing so because of that we managed to get some really early pickoffs as they have no defense here whatsoever you can see the artillery is running away and the artillery is fairly quick so it is going to get out of there however i am coming in ready for a nice little assault unfortunately though this uh is this carthaginian yeah, this carthaginian horseman actually got in my way a little bit and blocked my charge honestly he should have tried to run away and just allow me to pile in but again you kind of get these mis miscommunication and you can see my cavalry coming in just absolutely annihilating these guys guys on the charge granted the romans are going to come in and kind of warm me off but i've kind of almost done my damage to the unit i'm also going to come around here as well and try and get a really nice charge off onto the artillery crew as well which is going to oh, no i don't get a charge off from the artillery crew because they pop their ability right yeah they pop the vichy by caesar stopping me from 
popping any of my abilities. However, that is fine. I quickly anvil these guys, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I quickly anvil these guys so they can't escape. And then my ally, Sun Tzu, will turn up very, very soon and start cutting these guys down. I'm also going to be using my other cavalry unit as I run away from the infantry to come in here and just make sure we silence this artillery. Because the more we silence this artillery, the easier it's going to be. And you can see my horses coming in now, just doing a tremendous amount of damage to these guys. And this is pretty much, pretty much caught off their artillery off guard right now. We look at the rest of the battlefield, we can see that it's kind of going a bit iffy on either of the flanks. They have engaged us right here, however, this unit of the Legio Hispania, I think it's called. Is it Legio Hispania? Yeah, yeah, Legio 9th Hispania, the premium unit. They're going to be getting surrounded very soon. They have managed to engage the Tier 7 Legionaries. However, they're about to get charged by Tier 8 Falksmen. And these Falksmen are simply going to rip these Legio Hispania a new one from the backside. Hey, pun intended. And yeah, they're just going to cut them down. Coming around the flank, they're going to be hurting their morale as well. You can already see these units are starting to break. This one about to go to minus 24. And they're just going to get cut to pieces. So unfortunately, they are being surrounded right now and just sliced apart. There's also more Greek cavalry turning up as well. So even though we've done such a, like a tremendous hit in the flanks, it's still looking bad on the center, I should say. It's still looking pretty bad for us in the center. And we're losing a heavy portion of our infantry. You know, we had a lot more cab than them, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, they've managed to really push this infantry advantage, scaring me off. I'm going to be retreating off there with my cavalry as well. So we managed to kill their artillery. However, everywhere else isn't looking too great. We've committed a lot of our infantry up here to kill some of these tier 6s. And the enemy are using that to their advantage really nicely. They managed to kill a lot of our war dogs right now. Um, right here, our war dogs are pretty much useless now, but even though they are tier 7, they're not going to be very good in melee combat against the legionaries, and all their dogs are now dead. So we've pretty much lost two full players at the moment, whereas they've only really lost their artillery and their archers, which isn't too bad because we don't have a lot of archers ourselves. Okay, this is the title of the video. I'm pretty sure I called this Hammer and Anvil, and I want to show you guys the strength of Hammer and Anvil with Alexander. You know, this is what he is all about right now. I'm just going to show you the HP. So I come flying into the back right there. I pop Anvil immediately, and then Sun Tzu turns up and goes ahead and smashes from the front lines as well. And that's just the strength for Hammer and Anvil. You can see that his unit is going to route. If it doesn't route, then Miltiades can pop off his fear if he needs to just to ensure that he routes. And now he can just cut him down. That's what the strength of Hammer and Anvil right there. It's a really, really good tool. If you can, as Alexander, get around the back whilst the units are engaged, you're going to demolish that unit so, so quickly um, and just get them off the field of battle. That was an entire tier 7 unit we just annihilated right there, which was really, really strong. The enemy are starting to come back to their base now with a lot of their units. You can see that we are ensuring that we retreat back a couple of units to stop us from being ninja capped. We don't want that right now. As you can see, the balance, balance of power is in their favor. We have lost a lot of infantry in this process of killing their artillery. But I think killing their artillery has given us a great chance to push on right now and continue on the fight. The enemy's Falksmen, though, was on this left flank. The enemy Falksmen over on, on this side have just done an amazing job right now. Again, I'm going to come in here, just try and smash these guys down. But great damage off there on some disorganized Tier 7 infantry. And I'm simply going to hold these guys in place, put my Anvil again, which lowers their melee defense, and also their Charge Deflect, allowing this Charge from Miltiades to do a ton more damage as well. And he's going to come flying in as well, Echo right there. And also, you know, just surround these guys. The Fear's going to come off, and that's going to cause them a round damage. That's why Alec, uh, um, Scipio works really, really well with Miltiades because he can war cry and then Miltiades can pretty much just route someone with his fear. So Hammer and Anvil will work fairly well if with a Miltiades and Scipio as well. I just find it works better with Alexander because you get so much more damage on the charge. You can see Miltiades right there fighting with his brethren. I'm going to have to definitely unlock Miltiades because he is considered one of the strongest generals at this current patch. Uh, next to Verse and Gethorix, he is extremely good. That fear, as well as the other bonuses, just with how fast he is, allows some really, really gnarly play. So I'm actually going to get killed here. One of the things I've noticed with cavalry, and when people group up their cavalry, 
is that what seems to happen when I because it normally depends on who charges first again which shouldn't really be the case so if I'm fighting Greek cavalry and I charge first I normally tend to win however when they're clumped up like that with all three of their units on top of each other it seems like I hit the first unit and all my charge impact goes and then when their second when I hit their second unit then that just absolutely annihilates me. So it's like all my charge impact gets committed on the first unit, and then when the second, the second and third unit comes in from the enemy, then I get absolutely slaughtered. Which again, I feel like it's kind of stupid because it encourages people to blow up their unit, and that definitely shouldn't be the case. If anything, they should lose it, you know, for clumping up like this, and they should, you know, take a charge, you know, the deficit maybe to affect that because it does get kind of stupid uh, when people just clump up their units. So the enemy reinforcements have now arrived. My forces are somewhat depleted after a few good charges. You can see though, I'm killing it up there with 2700 aggression so far in the battle. So I'm gonna to decide to bring up my last general unit. I left this unit back just to guard base. Um, and now I'm gonna bring it up to try and get some uh, battle involvement and get some more charges. Cause this battle is really close so far. Only four points in it. And as you can see, the infantry are just cutting down our soldiers. Now the tier 8 Falksman have turned up. It's going to be a pretty, pretty, pretty crazy engagement. And we need to be very, very careful. Luckily, we still have some elephants left, which is really, really nice. And also a decent amount of cavalry. So we can definitely harass the enemy. Coming around here as well. And we just got our cavalry roaming around the battlefield. So as you can see, we don't really have a lot of infantry left. We have a few units over here. This is kind of our big bulk. However, if this dies, we're going to be kind of screwed. They have a lot of infantry left themselves. A lot of tier 7s and also them tier 8 Falksmen who are just going to be so scary. Um, so as you can see, I'm trying to keep these guys busy right now with my cavalry. It might not look like I'm doing a lot, but I'm trying to keep these tier 8s away from the main infantry fight. Because if these tier 8s get involved, they're going to be doing a lot of damage. But right now, all they're doing is stopping me from getting into the base, which really isn't that big of a deal, right? You know, I'm keeping up these tier 8s from doing anything, and all I'm doing is sacrificing my time where I don't really have a lot else to do. I am, however, going to get a really good charge off into the back of this Greek cavalry, taking it down. The less numbers they have, the better. Even though they can do a tremendous amount of damage, I want to try and at least kill their Alexander. Killing their general is always really good. I am going to get anvil, but as they try and retreat, I believe Alexander is going to rout. So killing their general is huge right there because it's going to lower the rest of their morale on their units. And you can see with the Miltiades coming in, we can kind of kill off the other unit and take away their cavalry advantage. And as you guys saw, you, you can do so much damage. Over here as well on the left flank, I'm going to faint off a charge. I don't want to kind of charge these guys from the front as they will hamstring me and I will get extremely slow. And if we don't want to take a look at hamstring, it lowers your melee, uh, your speed by a tremendous amount. It won't actually show me, but oh well. So again, all I want to try and do is let these guys engage and then come in. I actually did charge this expecting the tier 7s to come in and help me out. But yeah, here you go. You can see minus 80% movement speed is absolutely crazy. And that allows them to get some really good rear hits off me. However, if this tier 7 would have come in, we could have easily have routed this unit, I think. Not, it wouldn't have been too difficult to achieve that. So again, my cavalry is just roaming. Bands of power is shifting down, but we are losing infantry fast. You can see our infantry development right here has been completely surrounded, and the enemy forces are just, you know, shooting us to pieces as well as killing us with their infantry routing us and soon we will be gone so again that's a huge part of our infantry just gone we only have a couple units left luckily i managed to get a really good charge off with the support of the tier sevens holding them in place as i said hammer and anvil you want to look for these opportunities to first kill off the enemy cavalry and then once the ca enemy cavalry is killed you have free reign to do these hammer and anvils but that's kind of how i see the role as greek cavalry kill the enemy cavalry and then dominate with hammer and anvils uh, because with the anvil ability, you can really help out um, with getting away from enemy infantry. And if you can hit barbarian cavalry, you tend to come out on top because they can't pop their defiance until they're actually in combat, which is a really nice kind of almost counterplay. I mean, it's hard to hit you know a good barbarian cavalry player because they will always just dodge you because they're so fast. But it can be done, and as long as you play right, and you, you can outplay it, which is kind of nice. So if we take a look at my forces, I'm kind of depleted on two units, and then I have one semi-strength unit. We're going to be pushing to the enemy base right now, and try our best to take them down. However, the balance of power is not looking too great for us right now. They have about a 50 man advantage, and that's pretty much all in infantry. They don't have any pikemen left, meaning that our elephant can get a lot of damage done. It's just whether or not we get caught up. We need to make sure we try and stay alive as best as possible. This is a really nice burn as well off onto the tier 7 Roman infantry right there. And that's going to assist the Barbarian player right there. 
But again, our cavalry is getting caught out here again, which is just not good for us. We need to make sure we try and save as many men. Because you just saw right there, our balance of power shifted heavily away from us. And we need to use this elephant as effectively as possible. Because right now, it's going to be hard for them to take us down without vengeance. And normally what tends to happen without, without at this time in the battlefield, a lot of your opponents won't have vengeance because they would have already spent it and it would have been on cooldown. So this is the perfect time for our elephants to chop down. Unfortunately, no vengeance does go down. It's a nice little burn there by Vercingetorix. Scorched Earth on top of all that heavy infantry. How are they going to get out? Again, I missed that, but a beautiful hammer and anvil taking out a huge portion. At this point in the game, hammer and anviling into the back of that tier 8 was huge and routing it. Um, that's going to take away a large portion of their force and hopefully our elephant can just keep these guys at bay I mean he has to be very careful to avoid the vengeance right there But he's going to trample and every single point of damage right now is super important again Another beautiful hammer and anvil off on the tier 8s with the help of Sun Tzu uh, Baron Bar Barzo? Barzo? How do you pronounce it? Apologies for butchering your name dude um, I just don't want to call you Sun Tzu because obviously this is the clan, not the, uh, not the player. But it was a beautiful move by us. We feared them and also rear charged them. So that went ahead and caused them to rout. And again, at this point in the game, that is so important. The enemy seemed to have the infantry advantage, but we have the elephants still left remaining. And they don't really have you know javelins or pikes to deal with it anymore. Granted, Vengeance will take it down. However, as long as we play smart and keep on moving, it's very hard for them to pin this elephant down. And we can continue to use our cavalry charges to harass them. You can see I'm just trying to make my way around here, trying to get them away from the elephant to avoid the vengeance. We're going to continue to retreat. Balance of power is still so even. There's only four minutes. As I said, this goes down to the wire. This times out. So it's whoever has the most points at top right here will win the day. Um, and right now, they have a lot of infantry. They've also managed to catch our infantry right here. And the Roman infantry, with vengeance as well, will just take these guys down so quickly. So as you can see, what I'm trying to do is just get in the rear. Get off these charges. Because every single point right now really does matter. If I can kill them, then I can you know just do this without taking too many casualties every single charge i will lose horses trying to escape but as long as i can do more damage that's more important and as you can see our infantry is non-existent right now i think this is the healthiest unit our elephant is extremely depleted but all we need to do is just keep on not getting caught wait for their vengeances to go and try and seize the opportunities to take them down Right here, I'm trying to encourage this unit to stop me from charging forward by moving in my unit right here to come into the side. I could have maybe have killed these. Oh, I do actually kill these guys. Look at me. I'm such a pro player, right? Uh, so I, instead of going over there, I see their archers by themselves and decide to come up. Now, this is risky because at the moment, this is a huge portion of our damage arsenal right now. And by killing these archers, I'm leaving these guys somewhat segregated. And I'm going to get a bit punished right here by doing that. Honestly, I should have just let them archers be. They, they really don't do too much. And I lost a big portion of my cavalry force. And honestly, that could be the game right there. By losing that many horses, is going to affect how good my charges are and how effective they are at you know, suppressing one of the flanks and really hurting the enemy morale. So by losing that, I could have just lost the game, honestly, uh, which is really bad by me. And it wasn't worth to go after the marchers. I, I need to you know, kind of make a better decision there when a game is this goddamn close. The enemy are kind of taking the advantage right now. Our elephant is very low. And if our elephant goes down, that's going to be a huge portion of our damage and also our points just completely going. Again, though, I come into the flank here, hitting away on this cavalry. I do actually lose Alexander on the charge, though, which is pretty bad. But that's going to allow Sun Tzu to come in right there and finish these guys off. And taking away the spears is pretty decent. Is this guy routing? He's not quite going to route. Um, however, he's definitely very depleted. And the enemy is just going to do what they do best. You know, all they have to do is wait out another two minutes with the lead advantage. And they're going to come out on top in this match on Hadrian's Wall. And honestly, we need to be the ones aggressive. So honestly, all they need to do is sit down and just try and defend themselves. As well as that, our elephant is so depleted right now. You know, one good charge of vengeance will probably kill that elephant. And that's going to see our points going down dramatically. So everyone has to play so carefully at this point in the battle. Any kind of misstep like I did with them, with them, with them archers can cost us the game. 
So right now, I'm trying to kill these spearmen as best as I can. I want to try and get them away, because once these spearmen go down, I have a bit more free reign. So I'm trying to encourage him to go into phalanx like that. And now he's going to be a lot, a lot less maneuverable. And my ally is going to come in right now and help me out. If he had a fear, he could have just feared this unit. But we're just going to come in. He's not facing me. And just suppress that left flank. And that's going to route him off the field of battle. Again, four points in it right now. Three points in it right now. Look at that elephant as well. The elephant is so low. And we're also losing some infantry over here as well. The barbarians are going to try and run away. This battle is so close. They've also taken the advantage right now. Four points. I'm going to charge in through here using my cavalry just to break through their thin lines. I see they don't have a very dense formation, so I can just break through there. You can also see that our allies are pushing in against the enemy infantry. Cavalry right there. I don't want to do that. I just want to put their heavy infantry charge on cooldown. We're going to continue to move around. One point in it right now with one minute left remaining. All the enemy have to do is kill our elephant and they will take the lead. Honestly, they should be pushing all their infantry over here, just trying to surround this elephant with vengeance and kill it because that's going to take away a huge portion of our points right now. However, with the support of the infantry, we have enough to tie this down and keep on harassing it. The Defiance has also been popped by the Versingetherix. That's going to allow him to stay alive. I'm also going to come in with my cavalry and just try and take these guys out. Moving around the rest of my cavalry as well. If I can, I want to try and get a rear charge on the back of these guys. And as you can see, we do suddenly just take the advantage. However, they have 30 seconds to kill our elephant right now if they want to claim victory. That's all they have to do is try and take that out. I come in and rear charge the back of this infantry, freeing this up. And they're going to be chasing this elephant down. Luckily, though, the Hoplite Wall is holding by our allies. And this Milti Aedes is going to keep these guys at bay. And the elephant is going to run away um, and stay alive. All they have to do is kill this elephant with four seconds left remaining. And with only three points left in it, we are going to come out on top and win the day. That battle was so close and it was so like sketchy to play because every single soldier mattered. If you'd made one mistake right there and got caught out like I did with the elephants, I would say that's my bad. You know, that would have cost us the battle. Maybe, you know, if they could have killed that elephant and I lost my units, that definitely could have cost us the battle. And it also meant that my charges maybe weren't as effective. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that battle. It was so close. It really was. And it was an awesome engagement as well. So definitely go ahead and drop a like and a comment down below. If you want to see more replays like that, do let me know. I think the next couple battles uh, we do on the channel, I'll make sure I do a multi uh battle. Yeah, we'll do a uh, multi ADs. Uh, kind of couple levels. I'll probably level him up to like rank 2 or 3 or something and then take him from there. So we do have break ranks and infantry charge as well. Um, and yeah, the next one will be on multi ADs. And then I'm feeling maybe some Versingetrix infantry. I haven't actually got any infantry unlocked as at the moment, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I've got... Yeah, I need to get these guys. But again, I can just buy these. They're really cheap just to use free XP on. So I'll probably do that in the next couple videos. So yeah, multi ADs and then Versingetrix infantry should be a lot of fun. So cool. Make sure to put a like and a comment if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time and fish out.